Glory to God. As you're joining on, share this broadcast, invite your followers, and say, Father, I receive the prophet's reward. Wherever you're watching me from, bless you in Jesus' name. This is going to be powerful. Share this broadcast. Invite your followers and say, Father, I receive the prophet's reward. Keep on playing.
Thanks for joining in. Share, share this broadcast. Everybody, share, share, share. Say, Father, I receive the prophet's reward. I belong to you. I belong. Oh 
who you are. As you're joining in, share this broadcast, invite your followers, and say, Father, I receive the prophet's reward. Share this broadcast, saints, everybody. It's going to be powerful. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're perfect. That's me singing, saints. You're perfect in all of your ways. Oh, yes. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. You are your good, good father. Your good, good father. Who you are. Who you are. I'm in love with you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I born.
Everybody that's been joining in, share this broadcast. I need over a hundred people to share this broadcast. It's going to be powerful, saints. Bless every single person. praise every single person blessings to you and saints of course the lord is awesome and amazing we give god all the glory what scripture are you meditating on for today every single day let the word of god become your fascination and don't um i was telling one of my sons this my spiritual sons he asked me how do i read the bible I said, I don't read the Bible to read a lot of words. But I read the, the word. I, I would read a word to receive a lot of revelations. I, I just want to say this again. One of my spiritual sons asked me, how do I read the word? And I told him, I don't read the word to read a lot of sentences, a lot of words. I read the word to receive a lot of revelations. So the objective is not just to overflow with a lot of words. Because let me tell you what some of you all do. Let me tell you what you do. You read the Bible trying to read a lot. And that's what you miss. Because in the process of you doing that, you're not receiving revelation on the little things that God would like to show you. So... And that, that's how I've been successful in my teaching ministry. And, and, and so many people have been delivered and set free because the revelation of a word is powerful than just reading many words. Remember, the Bible said that Jesus said he was the word made flesh. It didn't say that he was the words made flesh. He was the word made flesh. So watch this here. One word, watch this here, saints. It accumulated and it was translated into the son of God coming on the scene and doing many things. One word, watch this here. One word, he was the word, one word made flesh. And he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. So we so we saw him doing many things and he gave us many revelations from one word. So that's just something I, I believe that would be very in, insightful for you. I shared this with you because I know that a lot of you are, are in the quest of seeking the Lord Jesus. And it's so beautiful. Don't take that uh, those moments of you seeking Jesus for granted. They are very precious moments. And I just want to tell you that there's moments where you'll feel like, King Jesus is not uh, responding to you. He is. He has the tendency to watch you from a distance and to see, let me see how much she wants me. Let me see how much he wants me. King Jesus has a tendency. He's a king. He has the tendency to look at you from afar and to see how 
much you're willing to pursue. So don't get discouraged and don't feel bad when you don't uh, when you don't think that you're receiving instant responses and instant uh, instant uh, uh, rewards. There's a reward. Remember, he said he had, he's a rewarder of they that diligently seek him in Hebrews, I believe, chapter 11. So you want to keep on going and don't let nothing stop your momentum in seeking God. Remember what um, what it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse one. It says, laying aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset you, laying aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset you. So you got to lay aside things when you're going after Jesus. You don't want stuff to stop your momentum. Every weight, that's, that's what Satan will use to burden you down, make you heavy. What did Isaiah 61 say? The prophet Isaiah had a revelation. He said, God gave you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So God has given you the mantle of thanksgiving and praising God and celebrating God so that you'll never feel heavy. That's so powerful that the Lord has given you an anointing to be thankful and, and to praise God and it'll remove heaviness from your atmosphere. And saints, you don't really need your condition to change. You just need your perspective to change. Your condition is in your perception. Your condition is in your perception. Remember the Shunammite woman perceived that Elisha was a man of God. Your condition is in your perception. She built room in her heart before she built room in her house. You caught that, saints? Ain't that powerful? The Shunammite woman, she built, she built a room in her heart before she built it in her house. Her heart allowed Elisha to come in. Before her house did. Her house was afterwards. Her, her, her heart was where she received him. Your condition is in your perception. Change your perception and you'll change your reception. You can't receive nothing from God if, if, you, if what you're perceiving is wrong. You know, it was Samuel as a prophet. God told him to go anoint a king. So he made, he made up in his mind what a king looks like. God told him to anoint a king. And he begins to make all these different perceptions of what a king should look like. So he sees Eliab and he sees all of Jesse's sons. And he says, oh, Diggle the king. He looks like a king. He's tall. He's strong. He looks mighty. God say, uh-uh. No, no, that's not the king. See, Samuel, even though he was a prophet, he built a perception in his mind that was inaccurate. Think about this. And he missed. Remember, he's accurate as a prophet, but he misses because his perception is messed up. Don't let your perception get touched by Satan. Guard your perception because then you'll guard your reception. You can't receive anything from God if your perception is, is tainted. Your condition is in your perception. Now Samuel, his perception is causing him to pick Eliab and all the other sons of Jesse. God didn't pick them. So he's missing because of his perception. As a prophet, you got to be very careful. The Bible said in James, let, let me go there. I want to go there and read it. I want to read it to you so you can see that it's in the Word. Let's go to uh, James chapter. Glory to God. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I want to show you something in the scriptures. Look at James chapter 2. It's talking about perception right here. 
And, and, and saints, if you get your perception right, you'll get your reception right. Now, your perception can be in deception. If your perception is in deception, you can't receive what Jesus has for you, even if he does many different methods to get it to you. If your perception is in deception, you shut off the wisdom of God. You shut off the, the, the voice of God. You shut off the ways of God. You can't move in righteousness because if, you're, if your perception is in deception, even when God does something, your inward man is going to fight God. Now, let's go to James chapter 2. Look what it says in verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. You know what this is telling you? Don't be prejudiced. Don't treat people better than the other. Don't, don't, don't decide who you're going to mistreat because of how they look. Don't decide who you're going to, uh, you're going to, you're going to cater to because they look like they got money or somebody may look poor. So you mistreat them. It says, hold not the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? With respect of persons. Wow. And then it goes on to give you a different, um, different methods of how you can have a wrong perception towards people because you're looking at how they look on the outward appearance. And God rebuked Samuel and said, I don't look at the outward appearance. You can't be prophetic looking at people on the outward appearance. Do you know that a lot of people, they prophesy off of a, off of a, uh, they prophesy off of a demon. You know what that is? Because here's what happens. They'll look at you on the outward appearance. You might be looking like this. Oh, oh. They say, the Lord told me that you've been sick. The Lord told me that you've been sick. And the Lord told me that um, he's about to heal your sickness. That's not really prophecy. Saints, you know, I often prophesy to people. I tell them, I know something wrong with you. They're like, no, nah, I'm okay. No. <laughs> you're not okay. You trying to say it, but you're not really okay. And saints, oftentimes, when you're a true prophet, you see people's hearts before you see their face. See, saints, if I look at you, I'm seeing your heart. I ain't looking at your face. Your face is a counterfeit most times. Your heart is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at you eye to eye, but I'm looking at your heart. And, and that's what God gives us as seers so that we can be a blessing to you, so that we can help you. Because listen, some of y'all females on here, y'all know y'all don't tell the truth. Y'all be some liars. Oh, oh there about, they're about 50 females on here, y'all liars. Your man tell you, what's, what's up with you? I'm like, nothing, I'm all right. And then he turn around because he ain't got no discernment. All right, baby, I talked to you. You want to go out? And you don't know that she up there thinking. She got a knife in her hand in her mind. <laughs> she got a gun in her hand in her mind. Lorena Bobbitt in her mind. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. And listen, brothers, you need to know this as a man. You're going to have to need to know this. Because let me tell you, son. If you ever get into a relationship with a woman or you ever date a woman or you ever with a woman, she ain't always going to tell you the truth. You're going to have to find that thing out. <laughs> You're going to have to be prophetic to look beyond the natural reaction because the natural reaction is going to fool you. And let me tell you something, females. Men are like that, too. We don't always tell you if we're disturbed, but you'll catch it. Most times when men are disturbed, they get real quiet. Most times, that's a signal for men. Most times, you get real quiet, get real standoffish. Now, every, everybody is different. Everybody has a different way of handling um, when they're dealing with something. And, and that's the beauty of how God made us. Every man and woman has a 
uniqueness about how they respond to situations. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to need the prophetic grace of God because people are not always going to tell you the truth. Saints, I've had people that I've mentored. I've had people that I have bought hotel rooms for, fed them, done different things for them. I've had them tell me that I was jealous of them, that I was, that I was against them. And I'm like, you didn't see that I just did this and this and this for you and I'm giving you an opportunity to be great. I'm teaching you what I know for you to be great. How could I be jealous of you? I'm Prophet Joshua Holmes. I'm a very confident man. I know who I am. I know what I accomplished. I'm very successful. I, and, and my success allows me to be uh, a blessing to other people. You understand? And, and that's, that's one thing that uh, when Jesus is building you up as a woman, as a man, you have to be... Uh, you have to be very appreciative of that because what the Lord is doing, he's giving you good success so that you can be a blessing to people. But saints, I'm telling you this because sometimes people's mind, their perception is in deception. I'm telling you this not to knock anybody down, but I'm just letting you know that there's people whose perception is in deception. How could Prophet Joshua Holmes be jealous of you when he's, when he's training you and helping you and investing money into you? If, if I'm being a blessing to you, saints, I, I've had meetings where I'm about to go preach and I see one of my sons, their hair not done. Let's go to the barbershop. Me, Prophet Joshua Holmes, I'm the preacher. <laughs> I'm the one about to deliver the word. I'm the one moving in the anointing, but I'm taking the time out. I'm taking the time out to do something for you. Ain't nobody looking at you. <laughs> Ain't nobody come to see you. But what I'm doing is I'm investing seeds of love. Whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. You understand? But you don't let that stuff change you. Saints, I'm still the same giving person. That stuff don't affect me. I just become even more intense in my love life towards people because I'm going to love you. It don't matter what you do to me because you're going to have to answer to Jesus. I'm going to love you because me and Jesus is friends, and I'm not going to lose my friendship with him off of you. No, not you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you because my perception is not in deception. My condition is in heaven. My perception is in heaven. I'm seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, be ye an imitator of God as dear children. Yeah, I'm going to treat you like Jesus. It don't matter. You know, there's many people, saints, you, you don't understand. When you're a prophet, there's many people that try to, they try to fight you. You're not even fighting them. They're crazy. They're crazy. They're bothering you. They're trying to stop the work of God from going forth in, in your life. You can't pay them no mind. Let them do their, their evil. But you stay in the love of God. You stay in the spirit. Don't let nobody take you out of the spirit. Yeah, because when Jesus look at you, what he going to say is, wow, daughter, wow, son. Look at how you handle this. I'm going to promote you. I'm going to raise you to another level in the spirit because look how you responded to adversity. Look how you responded. And in Proverbs chapter 24, I got a scripture say that if you faint in the, in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You're going to have adversity. Things are going to come against you. You're going to have adversity. But saints, don't be bothered by that. When you're a true prophet, you're going to have adversity. Don't be bothered by that. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14. Look what it says. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14. It says, in the days of prosperity, be joyful. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the days of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. God also has set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. You know what this scripture, all it is saying, huh? Is that Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14, 
the day where you're prosperous and the day where you're in adversity, you're in issues, you're in trials. God has allowed these days. So make the best of it. Don't get mad. Don't get anxious. Saints, so many times, let me tell you something. You are a prophet and you praying for God to get you out of the situation. But that situation is compatible to your prophetic anointing growing. It's powerful. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes you're asking God to get out of a situation that is compatible for the growth of your prophetic anointing. Your prophetic anointing is scheduled to intensify while you're in this. Don't worry about what people say about you because they're going to judge you if you broke and they're going to judge you if you rich. Look at this, saints. Look at this, saints. They got mad at me. They got mad at me. This is the money I had received. I was dancing, praising God in my church service. Let me tell you, son, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this so that you can understand. This, this, these are all the money that they threw at me while I was dancing. People got mad. They said, oh, they're throwing money at a preacher feet. You think I care? I'm dancing. I'm worshiping God. I'm praising God. They mad. <laughs> it don't faze me none. These are the seeds of people that while they sense the anointing, they want to join in and praise God too. So they sow. A stripper that does not love God. The world can throw money at the stripper. Nobody says nothing. A man of God praising God and people start honoring him. They get mad. You can't stop nothing. <laughs> you can't stop nothing. And saints, we don't change. Prophets don't change for you. They don't change for you. They change for God. Huh? They change for the Holy Ghost because they know, they know, they know what God is telling them to do. And God called us to be different. We're not trying to fit in your perception. We're not trying to fit in your reception because at the end of the day, we are in a covenant with Jesus to be radical, to go beyond what you think is right, what you think is normal. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. I understand you, daughter. You said you think that you know some. You, you said that you feel like you know scripture uh, strippers that love God. You can't love God and you using your body to strip for evil men. That's not love. I understand what you mean, though. I understand, but let me just let me just decipher this. If we love God, we have actions that we do. OK, so I, 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 I just and bless you, Jerry. You say I change your your thinking. See, you got we, we just got to hear. And, and so that we can judge correctly, because saints, the world always going to say evil stuff about us, men of God, true men of God. They're not going to say evil stuff about their own. They're going to say evil stuff about us. We're not listening to them. We're listening to God and. The people that we're changing their lives, they are committed to us because they know the anointing that they felt through us. They know what happened that they stopped smoking. I have many people in my ministry that stopped smoking cold turkey, stopped drinking cold turkey. I got daughters, I got sons that came out of lesbianism, homosexuality. Now they're, they're, they're free. So they know. But let me just say this. When you love God, hmm, when we love God, I hear you, Valerie, but let me just tell you this. You say we sin every day, but Valerie, if me and you get scriptural, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, we got to stick with the Bible. It said, whoever is born of God does not sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. That's 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. 
1 John chapter 3, verse 8, it says that um, uh, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, uh, that he might destroy the works of the devil. It says that whoever sins is of the devil. Whoever sins is of the devil. So what the scripture tells us that if we sin, we're of the devil. You understand? So if 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 anybody ever comes into sinning, that means that I have just come into a covenant with Satan. I, I'm making a decision that I want to be of the devil in that moment. I don't have to be like that permanently, but in that moment, you're of the devil. So what I'm saying is, um, because I, I know people that strip and I, I know people that live that type of lifestyle. You don't really love God. All right. But you have a desire to love God. And I just want to clarify that many of us have desires to love Jesus, but we don't know how to love him. So, Valerie, I just want to clarify this just to just consider this. A lot of times when we grew up, we said that we love Jesus. But if we was disrespectful to our parents, we didn't love Jesus, but we desire to love him. There's a large margarine of people in the earth that desire to love God, but we don't know how to love him. Now, I just want to say this as well. If we go to John chapter, uh, John chapter 14, let's just go here because I can't really love God until he commands me to do something. I can't really love God until he gives me an instruction. I can't really love God until he speaks to me to do something. And, and I love him when I do what he says. That's why he told Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yeah, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. So watch, feeding the sheep was the action to show Jesus, you do love me. So it was like Jesus was saying, I don't want you just to honor me with your lips and your heart far from me. I want you to do something that is the fruit of love towards me. So that's how that's how we show God our love. When we obey him, we can't just love him because we have a desire to love him. We love him because we actually do what he commands us to do. Let's go to John chapter um let's go to John chapter 15 verse 14. Look what it says here. It says, "Ye are my friends, Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. You see this? You are my friends. So watch this. This is a conditional friendship. Jesus not, watch this here. He not saying you my friend offer mercy and grace. He not, this is powerful, saints. Now, let, let me just say this. Let me just say this. It's amazing. Because what Jesus is saying in this text, if, 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 so it's conditional. If you are truly my friend, you'll do whatsoever I command you. So Jesus saying our friendship is tied to your obedience. If you're not obedient to me, me and you are enemies. This is Jesus and it's powerful. So what happened is Jesus is teaching us how to love him. Because he's in heaven, his body is in heaven. His spirit is on the earth. And he's teaching us what he wants in order for us to love him. Valerie, you get what I'm saying? You said dope explanation. You see, sister? Come on now. <laughs> so, 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 so that's the beauty of Jesus. That's the beauty of Jesus. Oh, saints, look at this. This is so mighty. Uh, this is so mighty. Let's go to John chapter 15. Praise God. Let's go to John chapter 15, verse... Um, Verse 20, 23, he said, he that hateth me, hateth my father also. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. Look at verse 24. If I have not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Now, saints, here's what's wild. Do you know that Jesus is really saying, uh, that I'm Jehovah God, y'all, and he's a man. He's walking around in, in a man's body, like flesh and blood. You see his eyes, his ears, his nose. And he comes to people and he tells them, hey, you know the father that you heard about in the Bible? 
He said, you have seen him through me. And, and, and saints, the people are hating him all the more. They're getting angry at him. They're saying, you're blaspheming. Huh? They're, 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 they're saying, hey, you're lying. Huh? You're lying against, uh, uh, against you're blaspheming. You're lying. And Jesus, they're looking at him as a man because they're saying, you look natural. You look like the normal person. But he's saying, hey, if you see me, you've seen the father. He told Philip that. He told them, hey, you have both seen me and the father and you hate us both. Saints. To the natural minded man, Jesus looked like a lunatic. He looked like a human being that's crazy because they're in the natural. But for people that truly have a spiritual desire and love for God, they're catching the revelation that this is the Christ. This is the Christ. Saints, we don't need another Christ. He already came. He sends the prophets to validify his coming so that you can experience the benefits of his coming so that you can experience the blessings of his coming so that you can experience the anointings of his coming. Now, saints, look at this here. Let's go to verse 25, John chapter 15, verse 25. He says, but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Saints, when you're carrying the real Jesus as a woman of God, as a man of God, people are going to hate you without a cause. Meaning you did nothing to them. You never hurt them. You never harmed them. You never. Saints, if you want to know if ministers are in witchcraft, study how they fight people that don't even fight them. That's the highest level of insanity. Saints, if you want to know if a man or a woman is a witchcraft preacher, if they're in divination, study how they fight people that never even put a word on them. Study. That's, that, that's a revelation that they are in the satanic kingdom. It doesn't matter how much word they preach. It doesn't matter what they say. They are in the satanic kingdom because that's not what children of God do. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. So saints, that's how you know who is true and who's false. And saints, the false ones will always fight the real ones. You'll never see a real man or woman of God fighting against somebody. Because when you're real, you know you're real. You never have to see Jordan, Michael Jordan, come and start downgrading the fake Jordans. You never have to see Michael Jordan do that. Because when the real Jordans come out, the real Jordans will speak for itself. The real Jordans will have the appearance of the real Jordans, the fruit of the real Jordans. You never have to see Michael Jordan or LeBron James come out and say, hey, these are fake LeBrons. These are fake Jordans because their real ones validify itself. It shows it. It, it, it confirms it gives uh, it gives answers to, to what it is. But the fake the fake always have to make the most noise. See, saints, me as a prophet, I'm confident. I've broken so many records. I'm the only minister in this world. I'm the only minister in this world that have broken records on Periscope for most views three times in a row. In less than two years, the same, I just, we had over 109,000 views on, 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 on Periscope. No other ministry in this world has done that. Not one. But saints, here's my prayer for my brothers and sisters. I pray that they'll be effective. I pray that Jesus will do the same for them. I pray that they will reach souls. I pray that he will entrust them and give them wisdom to be a vessel that he can flow through to touch people. Saints, our successes is supposed to increase our compassion for others. Your success, your prosperity is supposed to increase your love for other people. Always remember that. Every time God does something to raise you up, it's because he's empowering you to raise somebody else up. 
Saints, if you notice what Jesus was saying in this text, in John chapter 15, that I'm doing something that no other man has done. When Jesus is inside of you as a man, you will do things that no other man has done. That's your uniqueness. And, and nobody has to be jealous of nobody because Jesus is going to have you do something that no other man has done or do something that no other woman has done. You understand? So the reason why people get jealous is because they don't have a revelation that God will use it for them as well. Saints, I spoke in tongues. Uh, I interpreted the tongues. Or I had my 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 people in my 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 service interpret the tongues. That's the gift of tongues and the gift of the interpretation of tongues right before everybody. But stupid people don't understand that. Because they go to a church that don't have the depth of the Holy Spirit in there. And that's fine. If that's their preference, so be it. But you can't hate on a man that's deeper in God. Because even though I'm deeper in God, I'm still humble, uh, humble enough to teach other people how to move in it as well. And everybody that's listening to me is moving in it. So you can't get mad because you go to a church where all y'all do is just jump around, hoop and holler, and there's nothing manifesting from the Bible. There's things in the Bible that a lot of people will never move in. And that's fine. If that's their decision, that's their decision. But if somebody goes deeper into God, you can't hate on them. Saints, if Peter was in this generation, they would call Peter a magician because he walked on water. Imagine that. He walked on water. If I go walk on water right now, you, go, you know what they're going to say? It's demonic powers. Is, is witchcraft. But Jesus did it. I'm, I'm showing you how far. But your condition is in your perception. And your perception can be in deception. If your perception is in deception, your perception can't be in reception of anything that God says. I'm showing you how far gone you can be when your perception is wrong. Jesus turned water into wine. If I turn water into wine, you know what they're going to tell me? Oh, the Bible say you're not supposed to drink no wine. <sighs> but Jesus turned water into wine. No, it wasn't really wine. It was grapefruit. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was wine. But if you do it in our generation, oh, look, this is a false prophet. You're trying to get everybody drunk. Your perception can be in deception. Your perception can be in deception. Somebody can lie to a man of God. They drop dead in front of the man of God. The, the, the tabloids will say, oh, the man of God. Look at him. He's a witchcraft doctor. The man died in front of him. But Peter, Acts, Ananias, and Sapphira. Where was the money? And they both lied. They dropped dead in front of the man of God. But if it, when it happens, if it happens in our generation, they say, oh, that's witchcraft. Your perception can be in deception. And saints, that's why the Bible say the traditions of men have made the word of God none effect. The traditions of men have made the word of God a none effect. The traditions of men. Saints, I'm not going to change nothing in my ministry ever. Because I know Jesus. I know the Holy Spirit personally. And he's telling me to do what I'm doing. I, I'm not repenting for nothing I'm doing. I won't now and I never will. My perception is in reception of Jesus. I rather... Walk with him hmm? than to walk with a million people that's not walking with him. You understand this? You understand this? And saints, some of you all are going to have to catch this revelation in your life. I'd rather walk with him than walk with a million people 
that's not walking with him. Enoch walked alone. He didn't have nobody that he can go to. He didn't have nobody that he could share what he was doing with. He didn't have nobody that he could train them in what he was doing. He didn't have nobody that he could uh, give them clarity. Huh? No. You don't have to repent when you're in righteousness. Repentance means to make a decision that God wants you to make. That's what repentance means. The Bible said those that are led by the spirit, those are the sons of God. If you led by the spirit, what are you repenting for? You repent when you're not led by the spirit. You repent when you're in disobedience to God. You repent when you do something that God does not want you to do. That's what repentance means. It means that I start making the decisions that Jesus wants me to make. If you're making the decisions that Jesus wants you to make, what are you? Saints, Jesus said, be ye perfect. As your father in heaven is perfect. What do you think that means? The father doesn't repent. First John chapter three, verse nine, whoever is born of God does not sin. For his seed remaineth in him. See, saints, I'm teaching something to our generation that's in the word that's not being teached. People are telling you to sin is normal, is okay. People, people are telling you it's okay if you fall. And saints, we don't be hard on people that fall. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, if you see your brother fall, ye that are spiritual, Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. So I believe in that. I believe in mercy. I believe in mercy. But what I'm telling you is don't leave your excellence. Don't leave your excellence to be underneath satanic bondage. Galatians chapter five, verse one says. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Saints, we say this all the time. Who the sun set free is free indeed. But how come you accept bondage as the norm? You accept the demonic activity as the norm in your life? Don't do that as a daughter and a son of God when you have all this power that Jesus has given you to trample over the serpent and the scorpion and all the powers of the enemy. So if I have power to trample over the serpent and the scorpion and all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt me, why be underneath demonic powers to sin? Why? Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You understand? Uh, Cynthia Wells, I understand you, daughter. I understand you, baby. I understand you. Listen, listen. I understand you. But what I'm telling you is that the word is pushing us. You understand? I, I, I know what you mean by he married to the backslider and that we all sin. I understand that. But this word is here to perfect you, to bring you and bring everybody to a higher level. What I'm teaching you is glory level. I'm not teaching you falling short of the glory and repenting every time. I'm teaching you how to become an imitator of God as their children, Ephesians 5.1. I'm teaching you Genesis 1. Let us make man in our image and likeness. Adam was not a sinner. He became a sinner. So Jesus became a sinner so that we can become like Adam was in his image and likeness. You understand? So, so here's the powerful thing about this. Adam became a sinner. Jesus became sin and a sinner so that we can become what Adam was before he became a sinner, which was moving in the God realm, moving in the God nature, moving in the God thought life. And, and it's been made available. We say that the blood of Jesus is so powerful Huh? But this is what I want you to see. If it's so powerful, why do we accept sin like it's powerful? Why do we accept sin in our nature? If the blood of Jesus is really all that powerful, we have to remember if we say that sin is a must, 
We have just downgraded the blood of Jesus as if it wasn't as powerful as Jesus made it to be to cleanse us and deliver us. We are not slaves. We are sons and daughters of God. So you're going to have to, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter four, verse 23 said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Everybody has to do this. Uh, uh, what it says, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse one, be not conformed to this world. What did first John tell us? All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Do not be conformed to this world. We are not being trained of how to stay in sin and how to stay making mistakes. That's not our training. We're being trained in righteousness, doing things God's way so that we can be a blessing, so that we can pull our brothers and sisters out of sin. If you stay in sin, you can't help the next female that's in sin because you sin in too. What are you going to tell her? That means that you're a hypocrite if you try to tell her something and you sinning. So you're going to have to come into another realm. Hmm? You understand? You, you're going to have to come into a, another realm of living righteous so that your words can have weight instead of instead or you're going to be speaking as a hypocrite. See, saints, if you notice what Jesus was calling the Pharisees hypocrites, because they was trying to get this woman stoned that was called the act of adultery, but yet they themselves, he said, he that has no sin cast the first stone. They couldn't even fulfill nothing because they themselves were sinners as well. But when you live uh, in belief of what Jesus preached, it makes you live different. It makes you do different. It makes you speak different. Remember what David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord. What is David doing? David is making a decision that he doesn't want to be a hypocrite. He wants to be someone that has the standard of God. And saints, let me tell you something. When you're a prophet, people are going to talk about you. People are going to talk about you. They're going to say that what you said was wrong. They're going to say, but saints, we see in the scriptures that Jesus has a side to him that is very raw. He called Herod a fox. Now, if Prophet Joshua calls somebody a fox, they'll go viral. They'll start saying, oh, this man of God called people a fox. But Jesus called Herod a fox. So it wasn't a demon spirit that Jesus had that made him call Herod a fox. Jesus went inside of the, 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 the synagogue and overturned the tables. If prophet Joshua went inside of a synagogue, overturned the tables, they say, hey, we look at this false prophet overturning tables. But that's what Jesus did. It wasn't a demon spirit that had Jesus overturn tables. So hereby we understand the variety of God's personality and the, and the depth of how he functions and the depth of how he responds. And if you are a true prophet, a true woman of God, true man of God, you have to be open to how Jesus is going to move through you. I'm not telling you to take those instances that Jesus did and use those instances to do people wrong. That's not the objective. But what I'm telling you is you can't quench the Holy Spirit at the same time. You can't quench the Holy Spirit. You can't quench the Holy Spirit. You have to be who God wants you to be and you have to do it boldly. At the same token, on the day of judgment, you're going to stand before Jesus. And all the times that you quench the Holy Spirit, he's going to judge you on those times. All the times where you, you, you didn't let him have his way and you miss moments. Because saints, let me tell you something. Your obedience in every situation is connected to someone else being helped. Every time you obey God, Elijah had to hide by the brook Cherith. He could have been like a lot of us and said, why am I hiding by the brook Cherith? But God wanted him by the brook Cherith. You understand this? He wanted him by the brook Cherith. Watch this. Him being by the brook Cherith was to deliver the lady, the woman at Zarephath. If he didn't go to the brook Cherith and just waited there like God wanted him, he could have said, why am I here? What am I here for? But his obedience was connected to the woman at Zarephath because the next chapter of his life is the woman of Zarephath being delivered, being set free. If he does not sit there and wait and do the foolish things to confound the wise, that's why the Bible said God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. 
How would you like to see Prophet Joshua by a pond, a river? And you say, Prophet, what are you doing here? And I say, uh, God told me to hide right here. Well, where are you hiding? Why are you hiding by a uh, water and a sand and all this stuff? Well, God told me to hide right here. You would think I'm lunatic, but that's how God operates. And, and when you're in the spirit, you don't think like natural people. Karama kurepe kerema. When you are in the spirit, you don't think like natural people. You don't have their same responses. You don't have their same perception. Your perception is not in deception. Your perception is in reception. You're receiving Jesus. You're receiving the prophetic word. You're receiving the prophet because you are in the spirit realm and you're more advanced. You're more quicker. You're more wiser. You're more stronger. You're more receptive. You're more humble. You're more teachable. You're more submissive. You're you're more surrendered, you're more meek because you're in the spirit. And when you're in the spirit, my God, the meek shall inherit the earth. God can't get you to inherit the earth if you're not in the spirit. You got to become teachable. You got to become reachable. And you don't decide how God going to do it. You got to be open to the floor of the spirit. You got to be open to who he sent to you. You got to be open of how he operates. You got to be open to the move of the spirit. And when you become open, when you hide by the brook chariot and you pass that test to hide by the brook chariot, then God will promote you to the woman at Zarephath. Then God will promote promote you to speak up to Ahab. Then God will promote you to destroy the prophets of Baal. Then God will promote you to go anoint Elisha in his place. Then God will promote you to ascend and release your mantle, your spirit to the earth. But you got to pass the test of the brook cherith when he tell you to hide. When he tell Elizabeth, I want you to hide for five months. Then she meets Mary. If she didn't hide for five months, she would have never met Met Mary. She would have never protected John the Baptist. The Bible said that she was filled with the spirit from birth. He was filled with the spirit from birth. John the Baptist was full of the Holy Ghost. So John the Baptist did not come born of sin and shaped in iniquity. He came on the scene full of the power of God. What? He came on the scene full of the spirit, full of the grace, full of the fire, full of the anointing, full of the wisdom, full of the, the, the presence of God. And watch what the Bible said. Jesus came on the scene and said, if I may tell you this, that John the Baptist is Elijah, if you can receive it. What Jesus was saying, who amongst who I'm talking to right now, who has the perception to receive the glory level, who has the perception to receive another level of thinking, who can grasp this mystery that I reincarnated Elijah uh, to be continued. I'm ministering at Prophet Joshua Holmes on Periscope. Join me there. If you don't got Periscope, get your Periscope app. Join me on there. I'll be ministering on there. Bless you in Jesus' name. I feel the anointing. Those of you all on here, receive the perception of God. The Shunammite woman received Elisha because she had the perception. Mary Magdalene got delivered from seven devils because she had the perception. Mary stayed at the cross with Jesus because she had the perception. Peter denied Jesus. Mary supplied Jesus with her support. When Jesus rose from the dead, they was the first to see Jesus. Jesus didn't speak the word to Peter. He spoke the word to Mary to go tell Peter. Why did Jesus do that? Because Mary had the perception. So Jesus spoke to her first. When you have the perception that God wants you to have, he tend to give you assignments. He tend to share secrets with you. Psalm 25, 14, the secret of the Lord is with those that fear him. He begins to impart to you and he'll have you impart to others. Mary had the perception. She stayed by Jesus' side. He gave her the transference of the spirit and then told her, go tell Peter. She was the first prophet prophesying in the New Testament because of her perception and her reception of Jesus, and she stayed by his side. That's how promotion happens. When you pass the test of Jesus and you, now Jesus will use you to others. In Jesus' mighty name.